welcome to a new year here at uh, Thinking Like a Lawyer. I'm Joe Patrice from Above the Law, joined by fellow senior editor Catherine Rubino. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? You know. um, New year, new you? Yeah, no, it's actually New Year and uh, just just the same me, I think. I mean, which is <laughs> you got a, no bionic parts for Christmas? I did not. Oh, yeah, no, I I mean, no, just the same me. Uh, grand disappointment to the listeners out there, I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, but no, so are you? Are you a new? Always, oh. I guess. Oh, see, that's very esoteric. I'm ever like, evolving. Oh yeah, like yeah. every version of myself is slightly different than the previous one. Mm. Well, okay. <laughs> I've been I've been reading a lot of inspirational Instagram accounts over the last few days, and uh, it's rubbed off slightly. Yeah, I have not. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, <laughs> it would be very off brand if you suddenly became inspirational. I mean, I think I'm inspirational in a certain sense, just not. I, I I'm not inspirational. No, I'm not. No, no. <laughs> I'm not a. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna quote like live, laugh, love stuff, but I think that I inspire people in other ways. Sure, sure. I mean, I know that you're probably quoting that new progressive commercial. About, I totally am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't become your parents just because you own a house. The, the best, that that, really, that's the best campaign going right now. It, it is one of my favorites. Yeah. Every time I see it, I'm like, shh, I might get a new line <laughs> out of it. <laughs> but no, it's seriously though, it is a new year. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any resolutions for 2021? I had not really thought of them, but now that you bring it up, maybe uh, maybe that is an interesting discussion to have, well, uh, I mean, legal New Year's yeah, resolutions, yeah. yeah. Maybe people should stop undermining democracy in the new year. See, I, I don't know why you're getting so aspirational there. <laughs> yeah, so that's a... That's certainly one thing, and I think a thing we'll probably talk about. Yeah. I guess one thing that I might do as a resolution is try to figure out how to streamline the administrative tasks that my firm does. Oh. And with that note, let's thank one of our sponsors, Lexicon, and we have more sponsors too, but for now, let's uh, let's hear from them. Here's a message just for the attorneys out there. So you passed the bar, joined a firm, or even built your own. Now are you finding out that you're doing more administration than actual law practice? Lexicon can help. Lexicon is a legal services and technology provider with over a decade of experience streamlining administrative tasks like timekeeping, HR, billing, client intake, and more. So you can focus on maximizing billable hours and increasing client satisfaction. Call 855-4-LEXICON or visit lexiconservices.com slash go to learn more. Well, so we're back. And yeah, so undermining democracy seems to be a, um, it's been a problem over the last few months. We've talked a lot about Jones Day and their role, as well as some of the um, Mm -hmm. less than big law lawyers out there who are involved in this. But the most interesting development over the weekend was this release of a tape given to the Washington Post and the Atlanta Journal-Constitution of the president appearing, um, not even appearing, pretty explicitly leaning on the Georgia Secretary of State to, well, I leave it to a Georgia state law professor who was interviewed by Politico and who pointed out that the Georgia code makes everything about that conversation pretty explicitly, explicitly. voter fraud. Yeah, um, I, I saw some Twitter. There's a ton of Twitter action, obviously, about it. But somebody added Rick Hassan, former guest of the show. How is this not uh, voter fraud? And he just responded, it is. Right. Yeah, it, it, full it, stop. <laughs> pretty bad. Uh, so a lot of people are talking about that. They, they, you don't come to above the law to hear us do the dunking on the same thing all the major media news does. Sure, sure. What what you do come here for is us to have legal industry insights into it. And let's talk about Cleta Mitchell. Uh, shall we? Yeah, I've written about her early in well, I was going to say earlier this year, but yeah, it was twenty twenty. She's a partner at Foley and Larder. Yes, and. Uh, yeah, she's... and she was on this call, uh, a big law partner. So, we, which, so I think, guess the first thing that's worth noting is this marks something of a break because yes, we have talked about Jones Day's involvement in voter suppression efforts, mm-hmm. but always through working for intermediaries like the the GOP, Pennsylvania yeah. GOP stuff sure. like that, uh, and also or the campaigns. Or... Oh, right, and also they have historically done what I like to call the polite form of disenfranchisement. It's still insidious and awful, but actually what what kind of makes it most insidious is that it is stuff that they can kind of 
public relations spin as, oh, no, 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 we're not trying to take away people's votes. We're Mm -hmm. requiring them to have ID, this sort of garbage. What is new about this is that once the president started going down the road of this kind of conspiracy mongering, Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Dominion voting machines run by Hugo Chavez, uh, (laughs) this sort of mindset, the big firms stayed out of that. It was your Giuliani's, your Dr. Jenna Ellis's, uh, <laughs> your Sidney Powell's, the uh, Linwood. These were the people who got involved in those cases because they are bottom feeders. That is a term for it. Um, <laughs> it is a term I'm not going to shy away from necessarily, but it's also that they are they're free agents, right? Like mm-hmm, these are mm-hmm. these are people who don't have to uh, don't have to answer to either partners or clients sure. that uh, would be concerned about this. Yeah, well, I mean, a, a couple of things. I think. The fact that this became public was not intended, right, by Cleta Mitchell, Mm -hmm. by the firm. And while there is definitely a incorrect right wing conspiracy saying that this was somehow illegal, but it's not. Georgia's a one consent uh, state. This is totally fine to have recorded and released. Totally agree with that. Let's step back and focus on that for a second or so. Yeah, so the the phone call was recorded, it was released, but Georgia only requires one party to a conversation to consent to the recording. Right. That's fine. Basically, in a, in a one-party state, if you are on a call, and you can record it and do whatever you want with correct. it. And if it's a two-party state, then everybody involved in the call has to agree, correct. basically. Correct. Uh, and this was a situation where it was... No question, a one party. Correct. Uh, and there's also um, a bunch of rumors that we've heard about uh, that this was part of some sort of settlement negotiations and mm-hmm. therefore should be confidential. But- right. And, and I think it's fair to say it probably would count as a settlement negotiation. I think that there are lawsuits against the state to get access to stuff uh, that these mm-hmm. folks are party to. I mean, that does seem mm-hmm. like this would Although, be... Although, a- I think it's pretty clear that in the full recording, no one ever footnotes that, no one ever says this is a part of a settlement right. negotiation, which you most likely would if if it were. Yeah, so I, I wanted to get to that in a second. Let, let's dispense with the settlement negotiation yes. idea first, and then yeah. let's turn to that. I know you that. have... So the settlement negotiation idea, uh, I actually got a question about this from somebody who's not a lawyer earlier today, like... Mm-hmm. Isn't that what this is? Now, I said, yeah, it probably is. However, there's no privilege attached to a settlement negotiation. In fact, it's the opposite because it's opposing parties. You're telling the opposing party things. (laughs) But what there is, what we do have are in the federal rules of evidence and accompanying state rules do the same thing. We do make it such that a settlement negotiation can't be used against you in court. Correct. Uh, The logic to this, um, there are exceptions as there are to everything, but the the logic to it is the justice system is better off if people come to agreements amongst themselves rather than having the courts involved. So we want to encourage settlement negotiations. And if you could use everything in a negotiation, turn around and use it against somebody, nobody would ever do it. So we don't like that. So we don't let them do that. That said... That means that potentially, depending on all the exceptions and so on, Mm -hmm. if someone were to charge Trump with voter fraud based on this call, maybe elements of this call would not be able to be admitted in front of a jury. But that has nothing to do with giving it to the Post. Sure, sure. And that's the real issue here. I just kind of always think when this sort of thing catches fire amongst kind of the general public imagination, it's like a little bit of information is a very dangerous yeah, thing, right? Yeah. Like they know just enough to say, well, there's something about settlement in some evidence thing, so I'm sure it applies. As somebody who enjoyed evidence, uh, this was th- this, <laughs> this alone, was my right? moment. <laughs> this is our moment, evidence heads. But I wanted to jump off of that, though, into... Obviously, I I think these are like random people on Twitter trying to make this settlement negotiation argument. But Mm -hmm. if you're – let's take a step back and think about if you're a big law partner involved in this conversation, how do you let it get to this point? Like how do you engage in a conversation like this knowing you're dealing with somebody in a one-party state? How do you engage in Mm -hmm. a conversation like this knowing that a settlement negotiation isn't in any way confidential? How do you not – before having the conversation, say, we we need you to stipulate that this will be confidential. Right. Right. Uh, like, it, it's basic stuff. And, like, some people are like, oh, you're overthinking it. But I, I'm just saying from my experience in big law. Yeah. My experience in big law, you don't do any of this sort of stuff without all <laughs> of these safeguards. Nothing happens off the cuff in big yeah, law, right? No. Not at all. And, I mean, I, listen, I don't know Cleta Mitchell, but... She appears to be a true believer. Even before her direct involvement, mm-hmm. she was on Fox News peddling a bunch of uh, 
wild stories about voter uh, fraud. And, and, you know, she's been involved in the extreme right wing of the Republican Party for a very long time. I don't know her. I don't know why she allowed these things to go on while she was a party to the conversation. But it appears that it's it's she's a true believer. Yeah. I, I- and okay, I'm still just stuck on the sure. the the, it's the bad base, lawyering. It's bad the, lawyering. The base bad lawyering yeah. of this. Yeah. Like, and, and that's the thing. And all these these Twitter heads trying to like concoct a theory in which this was inappropriate to be released. And it's like, no, but it should have been because she mm-hmm. should have been on top of this. Yeah. And I mean, here's a question as a as a theoret as a let's mm. have a hypothetical. You're uh, a partner at, at Foley. Are you more mad that she was so demonstrably a bad lawyer or that she seems to believe these conspiracy theories? That's a that's a great question. Um, I think I, I, I think I'm more concerned about the conspiracy theories if I'm a partner. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, maybe as an associate, I'm more uh, more embarrassed by the bad lawyer. <laughs> but as a partner, I have a different concern, which is, you know, part of the reason why the bottom feeder brigade is who does a lot of these cases is they don't have other interests that they are putting at jeopardy. Mm-hmm. To do this, I, Foley and Lardner now has to turn to I, I don't know their their client profile, but let's just assume AT and T or something like that. There are no, definitely not, yeah. some big companies, some Fortune one hundred sorts yeah. of. Yeah. They have to turn to these public facing corporations mm-hmm. who are trying to I think, say, yeah, you still need to do business with us, even though we're doing all this garbage over here. Like that, there's a point where, and I, I make this make this point a lot, and unfortunately, have had to make it several times in several different contexts over the last year. This whole canard about like, well, everyone deserves a lawyer. You can't question lawyers because of what the, the cases they take on. We actually did a whole podcast on this once, Ellie and I did yeah, back in yeah. the day, but. Yeah, there, there's something to be said for not judging lawyers as professionals for doing that. But you can absolutely judge them as a business and as a brand for that. Yeah, and 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 there's also the flip side to that branding that mm-hmm. big law does, right? Is it's not just trying to get the clients. That's obviously a big part of what they do. But they're also trying to market themselves to associates, and, right? Yeah. To, to the best and the brightest. Like the whole thing about big law is that, you know, it's the smartest people every year joining the firm. Right, right, right. right. And if you are unable to pull in the top folks, listen, you'll always be able to fill out your class if you have a certain number of associates you want to hire. There are too many law school graduates who are desperate for uh, big law money. That is true. They will always be able to have a class. But who are they getting, right? If you yeah. have multiple offers, why are you going to Foley? Why are you going to Jones Day when you have firms that aren't an embarrassment? Yeah. You know, you're not going to be put in a situation as a young lawyer being like, oh, you're getting ribbed by your friends, theoretically, in a world where we can go to a bar again, right? Like, yeah. you know, we'd be like, oh, I can't believe you're working at that firm. You know, wh- why are you putting yourself in that situation when you can just as easily go to literally 200 law firms? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 I think that's very right. And I know you you pointed to a couple of, of tweets out there, people who are actually clients of Foley and Lardner being like, we're out. Yeah, I did. I did, in fact, see an in-house counsel that I follow on Twitter yeah. uh, make the public announcement that, you know, my firm does business with with Foley and Lardner so, uh, attorneys and we are terminating our business. Yeah. And I think more of that is going to happen. I thought more of that would happen with Jones Day. Jones Day seemed to have taken the batten down the hatches approach. Mm-hmm. And I don't know mm-hmm. how much uh, that's panned out that they've lost business. And hey, at this point now, they uh, they can be excited that they're no, they're, they're no they're longer no, public no longer enemy the, number one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and I think it's only going to get it worse for Foley unless they make some sort of a public statement disavowing this, not not just the lawyering, right? But the, yeah. but the kind of the statement. Uh, you know, they've seen Midas Touch, one of the super PACs that did that video about Jones Day yeah. saying how terrible they were. They're they we know that Cleta Mitchell's already on their their radar. They're already tweeting about it. Uh, you know that Foley is the next folks to get the Jones Day treatment. Yeah. Uh, and so I don't expect this to get better for them. I expect it to get worse. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that I remember what it was. I was talking about the lawyers as professionals versus yeah. as business. And there there's obviously a caveat if a lawyer is actively encouraging their client to mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. do criminal stuff. Then that that's that's a whole different problem. But the idea of you uh, taking on these cases that are troubling mm-hmm. plays into the brand. And to that end, 
I can represent a lot of murderers if I run a criminal defense firm. People sure. know that's what I do. And in and that's fact, okay. if they find themselves accused of murder, that might actually be and that's okay. a good thing. Right, right. Like if, if that's what you do, then you can do it. But if I run a, like, and this was uh, Lisa Bloom got in this trouble right. with, uh, with uh, trying to represent Harvey Weinstein for a while. If you build your business off of I represent victims and then you represent an accused victimizer, that's that, that not goes bad against your for brand. You. That's not bad for you as a professional. That's bad for you as, as a, a business. business. Right. Like that is literally against the brand that you've spent time and money developing. Right. Which is why when I hear this argument, um, this stupid canard that always gets pulled out about like, no, you know, everyone deserves a client, so you can't judge people. It's like, no, we can't judge them for their being a lawyer, but we can absolutely judge them as a business and they can face business consequences. Right. I'm not gonna take away her law license for doing this putting aside whether or not evidence comes out that she was Doing encouraging than, yeah. criminal yeah, yeah. whatever. But I'm not going to take away somebody's law license over this, but I absolutely can say that the mm-hmm. people who work with them should no longer sure. work with them. Sure, boycotts yes. uh, and and refusing to do business is absolutely the public's right. Business repercussions for business actions. Yes. There's not yes. professional this repercussions. Is not, this is business. not hard. This is not hard. And, and like, I feel like that canard gets... And I've used that word three times now. I, it gets tossed around. Was it like your word of the day? Did you get a I word of the day I calendar? Didn't, I didn't. I don't know. But <laughs> it gets tossed around to extend what is a, I think, a very important aspect of the profession to protect you from professional repercussions for doing unpopular things and tries to expand it as a shield for everything. Yeah, it's that whole a little yeah. bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing, yeah. right? It's Unfortunately, like... it's it's tossed around by the people with all the knowledge. <laughs> they know this. I guess they're trying to convince people. Uh, anyway, yeah, not, not great. But yeah, no, if I ran a transactional business within Foley, I would be very concerned right now about going back to my clients mm-hmm. who I just want, I'm just running some like random secured transaction with them, but now I have to, De- I have to carry have to around it, yeah. my neck all yeah, of this sort of stuff. The election bullshit. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, it, it's going to end up in their filings that they hired the firm and they've got to mm-hmm. worry about that and what, what yeah, and it's just, if I cared about transactions, I that, that would be, I would be concerned. You know, if mm-hmm. I cared about transactions and was a transactional lawyer, I know what else I'd think. What would you think, Joe? Well, if you work with contracts and don't use contract tools, you're missing a lot. Save time, make more money, and do a better job for your clients with contract tools by paper software. Contract tools is the most powerful word add-in for working with contracts. Thousands of lawyers all over the world rely on contract tools every day for every kind of deal. Visit papersoftware.com to watch a demo and get a free trial. As a special offer to podcast listeners, use coupon code LTN2020 to get one month free. That's papersoftware.com and LTN2020. So speaking of people who should know better, another mm-hmm. kind of election bullshit that we're dealing with is uh, Josh Howley and his merry band of, of senators deciding that they're not going, they're going to object to the certification of the election results this week. Hold on. I, yeah. So I just opened up a thing that I was just sent because, you know, we're, we're, yeah, yeah. we're busy. We're, You're we're, we're doing business. We do. We never stop for you, listeners. We're always working. <laughs> I was just informed that uh, one of the guys on that call, the, the, the other, because uh, Kurt Hilbert was on that call. Right. Uh, yeah. I've just been sent a page from a pleading uh, that he submitted, which he ends with respectfully submitted and God bless America. <laughs> and I'm uh, like in all caps. And I'm like, you know, that the sentiment is lovely. That is not how I, I would view a professional signing a complaint or anything, but <laughs> that is not in the in the default uh the idiom or yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah, no, but I anyway, to talk go on. more about people who should know better, Josh Hawley is um is is leading the charge to object and Ted Cruz as well. And the thing about those two in particular, although there are there are I think a dozen other senators who are on board with this. I think it's eleven total, including okay, okay. them at so, this point. I know that. Tom Cotton's out. It. He's out? Tom yeah. Cotton was Tom Cotton looked at the situation and went, Oh, uh oh. Yeah, I know like Lindsey Graham's like, uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh. <laughs> uh. but the, the whole thing about about Holly and, and Cruz is that they are lawyers. Holly, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, they are. They're not only lawyers, they're Supreme Court clerks. And and, yeah. and they went to some pretty prestigious institutions, Yale and Harvard, respectively. Yeah. They, yeah. I mean, it's 
I mean, well, well, the, the reason why I bring that up is that uh, folks associated with Yale and Harvard have are starting petitions that have signatures in the hundreds already, objecting, saying you need to do better. We're disavowing your efforts to undermine the free and fair elections, et cetera, right. et cetera. Yeah, no, I mean, and, hey, that's a uh, that's a natural and logical consequence, as yes. uh, as you like to say, of taking these sorts of actions. Yeah, I, so the the argument is uh, to delve into that because I think a lot of people have heard about this effort uh, mm -hmm. and not a lot of people understand it. Certainly, it seems as though the president doesn't. <laughs> um, the electors have voted. We yes. had an election. Those election results got certified. The electors who were chosen by those states then cast their ballots. Those are now going to be in the hands of Congress. They are going to open them and mm -hmm. then have a vote on certifying those results. Uh, it is a rubber stamp process. That said, there is a rule uh, there's a law that says that senators can object to the idea of it, which triggers a two hour session where they debate whether or not they're going to count these votes. Basically, it has been invoked before relatively recently. It was invoked, for instance, in the 2004 election between Bush and Kerry, the mm -hmm. Democrats invoked it. Difference there, of course, is the Democrats explicitly said we aren't trying to overturn the election. Mm -hmm. But we are invoking this to force a two-hour time limit uh, because they didn't control the docket. Uh, they, they Because they weren't in the majority at this point, they didn't have the ability to set the topic for conversation. Mm -hmm. But by triggering this law, they could force a conversation on the issue of voter fraud and voter suppression, whatever, because that's a, attendant and germane to that conversation. And then they used that two hours to just outline problems with voter suppression. So it was a symbolic gesture to have that discussion, mm -hmm. uh, not an attempt to overturn the election. Holly and Cruz, these folks seem to think that what this is about is, in fact, not counting six states worth of electoral votes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which which they can make it about that, but, you know, there's no basis for that. We've mm -hmm. had multiple lawsuits all tossed. And it's not going to be successful either, no. right? It, no. It's just an opportunity to talk about it for two hours. Right. It, it, well, they will have a vote. Uh, that vote mm -hmm. won't accomplish what they want it to. And what's worse is it will continue ratcheting up the pressure because it feels like this is a runaway train at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Like they keep saying, oh, this stuff doesn't count. We have, an, a, we have a way not to count it. We'll take them to court. We'll go to the, directly to the Supreme Court, whatever it is. And every one of these keeps losing. And that just ups the pressure on them to do the next stupid thing. And at a certain point, you've got to get off the tracks. Yeah, well, the other thing I think is that the purpose of this is to prevent primary challenges, right? If you're yeah. if you're a senator who's taking this stance, you're less likely to get an extreme right person that is backed by lots of money and institutional support against you in the primary season. I think that's the yeah, I think that's I, I mean, think it's a lot of the logic. I just don't I, see these guys getting But I mean, that's the kind that, of like difference yeah. between like the, when we were talking in the other conversation about the difference between a, a business decision and a mm -hmm. legal decision. There's a difference between a political decision and a legal decision. And I think that this has a sort of political logic to it. Mm. But I think when it's so off the rails, uh, you know, you have other there are other consequences to it where, you know. My Here favorite my favorite part about this is now they well not my favorite my least favorite followed <laughs> by my favorite my least favorite is that Cruz is now making the explicit connection that this could be handled the same way we handled the election of 1876 because there was some issues with certain states there the, what he's leaving out of that is the issues in those states were that the clan the clan <laughs> actually terrorized people to prevent them from voting which then led to wrong results. And the end result of this discussion was making Rutherford B. Hayes president with the caveat that he would end Reconstruction and allow Jim Crow to exist. So it's not, not... It's not really a shining moment in U.S. history. It's not, it's not one of those it's moments from history you bring up to. again. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, it, yeah. you don't use it as an example all that often. <laughs> or ever, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Well, I mean, I would have thought ever, but here we are. <laughs> uh, but my favorite part about this is that the end game of this, let's not count this and whatever, mm -hmm. is dependent on the Senate the doing this. And all of, the, all of these, they think kind of end in a world where Trump stays president, except... By doing the things they're talking about, the result would be Pelosi becomes president. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like there are there are machinations where that they can do that could result in something else. But the ones they're actually talking about, the through line of the logic is that there's a vacant president and vice president, and the speaker of the house takes over. I mean, yeah, okay, that's what they're actually aiming for. <laughs> uh. I mean, if there's somebody who is hated more by the far right than right. Joe Biden, it's Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, you'd think, but here we are. Here we are. Well, because I, I just don't think that the follow through and also I think because there's not an expectation that it's going to work. Yeah. Right. Like, I think that they do know enough to know that this actually doesn't change what happens on January 20th. Mm. They know that they, they're they smart enough to know that. Uh, some of them are, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 I'm well, not sure Ron leaders. Johnson is. Oh, but fair. <laughs> um, Tommy Tuberville. Yeah, Tommy Tuberville yeah. is involved, and I, I've watched enough football to know he, in fact, does not understand what's happening. I mean, one of the craziest parts about the elections of 2020 is that we've barely even scratched the surface of talking about Tommy Tuberville winning and becoming yeah. a U.S. senator. Let's go back. We'll go back a couple of days. So Georgia did end up crawling back barely and beating Cincinnati in a bowl game. But mm -hmm. let's just take a moment. Cincinnati, great mid-major program. Brian Kelly ends up leaving to take the job at Notre Dame, where he still, mm -hmm. you know, made the playoffs. Um, Lost, but he's yeah. replaced by Butch Jones, who you know moves on to an SEC job because he's so successful. Mm -hmm. Tommy Tuberville takes over this program, drives it into the mantle of the earth. Bad. Mm -hmm. He leaves almost immediately, turns around and becomes a top <laughs> ten team again. It's this is how bad this guy is at the only at the thing that's that actually he was his job. For. Yeah. The at the job he he's actually... good at, he's yes. bad at. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Well, um it, it just shows how important it is to understand the industry that you're in is so that you can excel at it. How have law firms weathered previous economic downturns and come out stronger on the other side? LexisNexis Interaction has released an in-depth global research report confronting the 2020 downturn, lessons learned during previous economic crises. Download your free copy at interaction.com slash like a lawyer to see tips, strategies, plans, and statistics from leaders who have been through this before and how they've reached success again. So I guess in the, the last little... Uh, little moments here uh did you i know we did it kind of as a joke to seriously s to set up some of these topics but did you have any uh resolutions legal oriented or otherwise i mean i'm continuing to take my coffee game seriously interesting okay i've never been much for coffee i yeah. that's, i know people think that i'm weird but you know i've always been a iced coffee fan and i continue to be obviously we had a previous conversation on the podcast about my love of jot which i continue to enjoy by the yes. way they have a seasonal brew like a winter wind wonderland brew and it it is so good but i'm trying to also get into my warm coffees i get cold all the time and you know i don't know it's in the middle of like winter and the the wind is howling out the window i don't know i want like a nice or maybe tea my warm beverage game i think needs to be improved yeah okay that's fair my new year's resolution i suppose if i have one it's mm -hmm. the same one i've had the last two years which is figure out what instagram is which i still <laughs> don't know yeah i think i want to take twitter a little bit more seriously that was my other thing i was thinking about. um yeah see i i I understand Twitter. I yeah. could totally help with that. I just need to figure out. I just don't, I don't understand, understand why Twitter. I would take a picture of myself. Well, you don't have to take it of yourself. I mean, I like to take pictures of myself because I'm vain and very pretty. Fair enough. But, but I just. But you can take pictures of things. I Sunsets. Just... Oh, you should do sunrises or something. Yeah. And then it'll also get you up early. Isn't that, couldn't that be a New Year's resolution too? No. That is that <laughs> absolutely is absolutely not. the opposite of a year's resolution. Um, no, I I don't know. I, I see. Just I mean, don't... I understand Twitter. It just seems like it takes a lot of effort, and people who are always on Twitter are just angry. Mm. I mean, I know you spend a lot of time on Twitter, uh, but it just seems like it negatively impacts folks' well being, and mm. I'm not really excited about that. But I do feel like it's probably a part of my job that I should I should yeah. get better at. Fair enough. Well. With all that said, follow uh, me on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. No, we're, I will we're, try to take it more seriously, you guys. <laughs> there we go. We're, 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 we're gonna we're gonna do that for sure. So follow. Uh, she's at Catherine One, the numeral one. I'm at Joseph Patrice. Uh, you should be reading above the law as always. Uh, we have some exciting stuff this week. The lawyer, of the year winner, just came out. You know, we got we got all kinds of fun things. Like we didn't even talk about that. That's how crazy this is. We did not talk yeah. about like, Who, the big... an election specialist. Also, yeah, right. <laughs> Easily could have fit. Yeah. 
But anyway, huh. um, maybe, we'll, maybe maybe next week we'll squeeze that in next week. So read above the law as always. You should be listening to this show, you uh, which you are now, but you should listen to continue. it regularly. You should continue. You should uh, give it reviews, stars, write some commentary because that all just the act of engaging in writing, even if it's just a simple love the conversation sort of statement, even that act of writing tells Apple, hey, well, and other services, but obviously a lot of it is Apple podcast, tells them, hey, people care enough to be engaged. That means that this must be uh, something people listen to. Uh, and that's useful for all of us. You should always check out our other shows. Catherine hosts a show called The Jabot. I'm on the Legal Tech Week Roundup about legal technology. You should be checking out the other shows from the Legal Talk Network. See, there's just too many legal, like all of them right in a row. I, I get all the names messed up. But I think I got that right. Uh, thanks, as always, to Lexicon and LexisNexis Interaction and Contract Tools by Paper Software. And yeah, I'm, I'm all flustered because I had to move the uh, the Twitter stuff out of its usual Sorry. place in my head. Well, because it, it, it no, you I mean, know, had it like a sense. natural and logical kind of flow to it. Totally and, understood. You know. I mean, I, I didn't argue with you, did I? But it, it, it did throw me off there. Anyway, so with that said, I think I've said everything I'm supposed to say, and we will uh, check in next week. Bye.